Welcome to the Old Classic Car Channel and the 10th instalment of original photos of British cars in the 1950s and the 1960s. And to begin with, we have 8953KD, which is a Morris Mini Minor. KD is a Liverpool registration series from 1962. Second up in this collection of old photographs, thanks to Roger for this snap, EL4273 is actually in Ceylon, which is now Sri Lanka, and the photo dates to 1953 or 4, and we have a little Reliant three-wheeler, what a little cracker that is. A colour snap now, an old slide, and on the right hand side there we've got 632DXO, a Morris Minor Traveller, the London series, also 1962 or thereabouts. Old frame tent there, a bit of a camping weekend by the looks of it, and an old caravan on the right hand side as well. A photo now from a traffic survey held in September of 1954 in London, we've got all sorts of cars here. There's a Ford Zephyr 6 on the left hand side with a sit up and beg Ford angler in front of it complete with roof rack and a Triumph Mayflower Mark 1 console and so they go on, cars as far as you can see. Next up a side on view from the late 1960s of a race prepared Ford Anglia 105E driver Mick Hill it says on the door. Does anyone know who Mick Hill is or was and where this may have been? Possibly Brands Hatch. A couple of young ladies now and a Singer Gazelle KDJ205. That's a St. Helens issue, um, first used in March of 1959. Two tone Singer Gazelle, which was the upmarket version, if you like, of the Hillman Minx. A head on view now of a gent and a young lady and MUX522, which is a Shropshire registered circa 1955 Austin A30 Saloon, the AS4 series car. You just about see the small rear window, uh, which is one of the signs of it being an A30 as opposed to the later A35. Same lady, I think, but different car. And we've got 1267MN. A Hillman Minx, circa 1959. Look at those hubcaps. I have never seen full width hubcaps like that with the fake spinners. If anyone can tell me more about those, please let me know in the comments. And I think this is the same lady again, but at a different time. And this time stood alongside a Morris Minor Thousand. To colour slides now, a lady on a couple, there's a couple of recliners there and a bit of a tea session going on there, a camping stove set up there and a J Reg Ford Cortina Mark II, a four door saloon, I remember recliners like that back in the 1970s. All black and white photo now at a Jaguar service station, now is this at Browns Lane or somewhere else, I really don't know, but many many Jaguars in shot including a Mark V's. These were built from 1948 to 51, saloons and drophead coupes, available with a two and a half or three and a half litre engine. If anyone can tell me more about where this is, I'd love to know. Okay, 1293JW, that's a Ford Consul Mark II. It's a Wolverhampton series from about August 1960 onwards. Got an RAC motoring badge on the front and an extra lamp, but otherwise it looks like a fairly standard car. Another BMC service facility in a period photograph, a factory photograph of a, now let me have a look, just on the hubcap there you can see an MG badge, so it's an MG Magnet, one of the Farina cars, having its suspension and steering adjusted and checked out, all the latest equipment there. Over to Australia now and we have a Morris Oxford MO, um, you can just about see a sign in the background for Shinny something and up in the top there Shinnick Street. Um, but if anyone knows where this is, I did find a Shinnick Street on Google Street View, but it didn't look much like this, um, or even close. Okay, standard 10 now being auto tested in a motor club event somewhere or other, WPB 417.
same little standard being given some welly around the cones, or in this case an old oil drum. All of them are lettered, so you've got a precise route to take around the oil drums, and it's all against the clock. Presumably you uh, lost points for uh, anything you hit. There's an interesting array of steam vehicles in the background as well. Staying with the standard Triumph group for a moment, NLX 68. That's a 1953 London registered Triumph Mayflower with the, the razor edge styling, which wasn't to everyone's taste, but um, certainly distinctive. Another shot from London 1954 on a variety of vehicles there, some British, some American, needing a little Fiat in the lineup. And then foreground is an NYE 958 Ford 1000 weight van, uh, which appears to do a direct deliveries from Grimsby to London of fish. I'm sure that smelt wonderful inside. Colour snap now of a 1960s Bedford TK lorry. Uh, appears to be operated by the British Fuel Company if the vehicle in the background is anything to go by. I think you need some new wiper blades there. And there's the tipper in action, Bedford TK of course. These were popular throughout the 1960s and 1970s and most of the survivors you see today are horse boxes. I think they probably lead the easiest lives of all. Okay, the first of several Vauxhall Victor F-Type photos that appear in this particular collection, XAW102. This is a May 1961 onwards registered example. These old cars rusted for England and uh, uh, yeah, there's plenty more photographs where this came from coming up later in the video. But yeah, I quite like those. Now, side on view of a slightly later British car, this is an Austin A60 Cambridge. Um, it looks like a holiday trip and there's a very distinctively shaped caravan in the background with a lean forward look on the left hand side there. I've got a feeling I've seen a caravan a bit like this up at the Lakeland Motor Museum. Um, but if you can tell me any more about it please do so. Head on view of two classic British cars here. There's a good old Wolseley on the left there, a Wolseley 1500. Uh, that's a Wolverhampton registered car from about 1959. And on the right an Austin A55 Cambridge Mark II. That's a Worcestershire registration from about 1959 also. Herald convertible next to Triumph Herald 443JEA. That's a West Bromwich registered car um, used in October 1962 onwards. There's a young gent sat on the uh, bonnet, or rather the front wing, of his Ford 100E. Now is that a 100E saloon, or is it a 300E van? It's got a two-tone paint scheme, but uh, is there anything else there that can uh, determine whether that is a van or a car? Ah, good old Austin A40 Farina. This is a Mark 1 A40 Farina Deluxe. The Deluxe had the rear opening side window that you can see on this particular car. Uh, the boot is open, just a tiny little boot there. It's not the Countryman with the lift up rear window, so everything had to be posted through the little letterbox on the back. Staying with BMC, a couple more here. We've got EBF 40, that's an Austin Mini Deluxe, a Mark 1 car, sort of circa 1960 or early 1961. You see the old Ace number plates there on the front of it. Very nice car. There's Austin Cambridge over on the right, a Mark 2 Cambridge. Another Jaguar photo, one of several old photos that turned up fairly recently. We've got an XK120 Roadster here and a little van just in the background. I'm wondering if there's a Jaguar development car possibly because it looks like it's done a fair few miles. And I'm just wondering if these photos were taken in the sort of late 40s, early 1950s and this is a factory development car perhaps. But if you know more, let me know. Okay, back to BMC and we have a good old two-door Austin A35 Saloon. Slightly fuzzy but interesting nonetheless, and we have a Ford 100E Anglia. I recently added a video compilation just of photographs featuring the Ford 100E, so if you're interested in these little Fords, please check that video out as well. It's a two-door car with just one rear view mirror attached to the uh, offside front wing. Clearly didn't need one on the near side. 
thanks to Barry for this photo now and there is Barry sat behind the wheel of a Ford Zephyr Mark III taxi circa 1965 and this is outside Stafford Law Courts quite a gathering of old taxis there two photos now of a mighty Daimler this was a a trial to see if these cars would actually fit in the rail train. These carriages are specially built to accommodate cars. And presumably you couldn't actually get out of your car once you were in there because there's no room to open the doors um, unless you parked very carefully because I think there were some side access doors. But yeah, that's a Daimler and that's the DR450 which was the limousine version of the V8 Majestic Major. What a cracking car that is. Bit of a hot rod back in the day, four and a half litre V8 crack 120 miles an hour and quite a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing by all accounts okay we've got the Glenloy ferry here by the look of it we've got a variety of cars waiting to pull off the ferry and the Ford Anglia 123E Ford Anglia Super by the look of it and Mark 1 Cortina there's a Herald Estate in there I'm not quite sure what's behind it looks like a Volvo 140 on the far left hand side Right, um, one of the regulars to the old Classic Car YouTube channel kindly sent over several photographs. He wishes to remain anonymous, but this is a Vauxhall Victor that his dad bought new, and they own that from 1959 to 1967. Quite a few other classic British cars there. There's a nice Minx Californian on the right there behind the Standard 10. There's another photo of the same car. It's got some extra lamps on the front. It was a fully loaded example, apparently. It was like an ex-dealer demonstrator car. Had all the mod cons such as a heater and windscreen washers, radio and a clock. Here you can see the car, I think it was new at the time. There's an old caravan in the background as well. So there's a Holiday HBG 493. That's a Birkenhead registration series introduced in May of 1959. You can see the radio aerial on the front wing there. So, uh, yep, radio equipped this particular Vauxhall. There it is on a roadside picnic. Sadly, the car rotted out at incredible speed. There was already, the boot was rusting out um, once it was only six years old and it was scrapped not long after, which is a bit of a shame. And eventually it was replaced by a Triumph Herald Estate, which we'll see a picture of a little later. Clearly it's a bit of a damp day, but spirits were high. And there's another front three quarter view, the same Vauxhall Victor, the F-type car. There's a Morris Miner in the background driving past. Wonder which car lasted longest. Now, oh, head-on view, this is from the same gentleman sent me these photos, two photos now, um, of a 1966 Triumph Spitfire 4 Mark II. What a cracking car that is. In fact, three photos of this car in this particular collection. You can see an extra clip-on rear-view mirror there. It's got one of those stick-on panels in the hardtop and the glass rear window of the hardtop. Yeah, that's a better view of it. There's a few extras on this particular Triumph. We've got a lamp on the middle of the bonnet there, AA badge on the front, a couple of racing wing mirrors. Extra side indicators on the rear front wings there. Yeah, cracking car. I do like those a lot. I think they're a lovely shaped car. There's a rear three quarter view of the same Triumph Spitfire Mark II. You can tell it's a Mark II by the low front bumper. Only the Mark 1s and the Mark 2s had that. Uh, the Mark 1 had a lower front door handle, so that makes this one a Mark II. Nice old caravan on the, in the background there. Anyone know who made that? Okay, from the same stable, this photograph is of the Triumph Vitesse Saloon that replaced the Spitfire. It's a 2 litre Mark II Triumph Vitesse. Great car, 2 litre straight six engine under the bonnet there. The four headlamps uh, mark this one out as the Vitesse as opposed to the four cylinder Herald. Otherwise, they look very, very similar to be honest. And there's a rear view of the same car. You can see the badging on the back there, Vitesse 2 litre. So this would have the Rotaflex rear suspension, so it's still independent rear suspension, but less prone to tucking under if you backed off in the middle of a corner. The earlier cars would happily spin you around and put you through a hedge if you weren't too careful. And here is the Triumph Herald Estate that replaced the uh, Vauxhall Victor that we saw several photos of a few moments ago. This is a 1964, or 65 rather, Triumph Herald Estate, also with a radio aerial, so a radio in this particular car as well. Extra wing mirrors, very practical car indeed. 
There it is on the family's driveway, MMA 135C, the Triumph Herald Estate, and the Spitfire is there on the left hand side. Same family, there's the Vitesse on the right hand side again, and the newly acquired Ford Escort Mark 1 Estate on the left there. Another practical car, estate clearly, um, proving popular with this particular family, and I can well see why they're very popular now and quite hard to find. And there's another view of the Ford Escort Estate Mark 1, it's a Hillman Imp in the neighbour's driveway as well, and there's that there's a Saab 99 in the distance there, visible underneath that sold sign. Looks like it to me. To a seaside location now, this is from the same person. Um, this shows his uncle's Bedford CA and Ford Zodiac Mark II Saloon. Again, it's got one of those uh, stick on rear demister panels in the back window. Okay, back to London in 1954, and another traffic survey photograph here. Um, you can see a couple of Austins there on the left hand side, a couple of the counties Austins as they call them. There's a Sunbeam pulling out a little bit further up, just trying to miss the front corner of a pre-war Rolls Royce. There's a Morris Z van on the left as well. Okay, HPR 108, um, thanks to Keith for this particular photo. Here he is with his first car. A Mark 1 Ford console and it's a Mark 1 Ford Cortina in the driveway. Clearly the family were fans of the Dagenham product. Many thanks to Keith and everyone who sends these photos in to use here. Now three photos now from my own collection and as we'll see this is of a Scammell Scarab three-wheeler that appears to have had a slight moment in central London. We'll get a better view of that and there's an old recovery truck on the right hand side there ready to uh, pull it back onto its wheels. There it is, ready to be pulled over. You can just see the lorry on the left hand side that's been tasked with doing the job. But yeah, that's a slightly unfortunate moment. I'm not quite sure how it ended up at that angle. There we go, you can just about make out that the Scammell Scarab is back on its wheels, as is the trailer, and you can see the livery of the Corporation of London on the sides of the trailer. The location is King William Street in London, which is still there of course, but I doubt that the Scammell, the Vauxhall Victor or the Austin A30 are, sadly. Okay, a colour slide now from the late 1960s of a Bedford HA van, complete with period roof rack. Back to that uh, BMC service facility and clearly there's work going on under the bonnet of an A55 Cambridge Mark II here. I'm assuming this is probably a brand new car looking at how the chrome bumpers are still wrapped up and there's no dirt at all behind the front wheel and the inner arches there. So it's presumably having a bit of a pre-delivery inspection or similar. Can anyone tell me what scooter this is? It's got the old style metal L plate on it. But what make and model of scooter are we looking at here? Carrying on with this collection of photos from the 1950s and 1960s. Got a pair of British classics here, the MFK 653, that's a Vauxhall Wyvern on the left hand side, one of the E series cars, um, with a two door black Austin A35 alongside, which could be a rental car. Thanks very much to Jeff for sending this particular snapshot over to feature in the video. Another old slide now, presumably from the, I'd say, the mid 1960s. We've got an A55 Cambridge Mark II, they feature quite regularly in this particular video. The Mark 1 Mini, and behind that, you can just about make out the uh, pin and farina lines of the Austin A40 Farina. Now, some trialing photographs just post war. This is the start of the Moorfoot trial in about 1950. Various cars are all gathered for a day's competitive motoring on the hills of that particular area. There's some cattle on the right hand side as well. Well, everyone's wrapped up, so uh, I'm assuming it's a chilly part of the year. 
And there's SB8068, same car. This is on the MG Car Club trial, March 1950. Apparently the driver was Jack Wilson. You can make, uh, make out the Ford front axle. And you've got Ford front wheels there, which you can see were updated for the following season. And that will appear in the next photo. So just have a look at that one, the shape of it all. And here's the same car in 1951. Very different front end, very different chassis, body slightly different as well, but same registration. You can tell the wheels are different. And this is described on the back of the photo as an Austin A40 Special. This is a Falkirk trial, April 1951. So clearly over 5051, the winter, the car was completely redeveloped. Now here, we've got a rear on view of an A55 Cambridge, but this time the estate car version, the A55, or possibly even the A60, because they do look the same from the back. Uh, countryman version. I wonder where this was. Other BMC cars in the background. There's an Austin A40 Somerset and an Austin Cambridge. Lovely little pedal car shot now. A young lad sat inside his uh, Jeep pedal car. I wonder if this is actually a home built car. Right? It doesn't look like a Triang pedal car to me. I know they did make Jeep pedal cars, but this looks more, slightly more like a culture. So if it may be, it could be a one off. And to round out this collection of original photographs of British cars in the 1950s and the 1960s, we've got a street scene somewhere or other. There's an A40 Farina Mark I, a Moggy van, there's a Bedford CA pulling in behind it. And is that one of those pesky foreign jobs of VW Beetle in the background, I wonder? Probably is bright red. So, that's 65 more photographs of original photos from the 50s and the 1960s. Um, like I said, this is part 10. There are another nine installments before this. So if you're new to the channel, please go and hunt those down because there's some fascinating old photographs there. And there'll be many more videos coming on very, very soon. So thank you very much and bye for now.